there are you know lots of things you learn from wrestling and uh, among them are perseverance and self-reliance and and individuality and uh, you know the idea that uh, that hard work and commitment will lead to positive outcomes well, I was born in Waterloo, Iowa. Uh, actually, lived there most of my life. I, in truth, I was born in Burlington. But um, my uh, family—I was the oldest of uh, five siblings. Uh, my brother John is on the National Wrestling Hall of Fame board and and was an outstanding wrestler in his day. Um, my dad, I think, when I came home and said I wanted to be a wrestler, thought I'd lost my mind because he was a an all-state football player and an all-state basketball player. But uh, one of the things that uh, was important in Waterloo was wrestling. All of the high schools had outstanding wrestling, um, none better than West Waterloo where I attended. Yeah, I'd have to say that Bob Siddons was about as influential in my life as, as anybody other than my parents. Uh, I think he was very influential in, in uh, making me understand that I ought to have some confidence in my abilities and that I could uh, I could have the chance to go on and compete in college if I if I really wanted to devote myself to it. The the decision to go to Moorhead State, I uh, I look back on it today and and am still not sure why I made uh, the decision I made. It was just uh, one of those things that I I was ready to be out of Waterloo for a while. I I met some of the best friends of my life uh, at that institution and and really never looked back. I met Bob Bowlesby in uh, the fall of 1971, and uh, it was through wrestling, Wrestling Connection. I, I was on uh, athletic scholarship at Moorhead State College in Minnesota. Bob had already been there for a year, but uh, we were two of only three Iowans on that team. I remember uh, my mother passed away fairly early. Uh, I think she was uh, 67, and uh, the first phone call I got on that was Bob. Just, you know, a re repetition of what he's always done is encouragement, support, and, and uh, you'll move on from this and those types of things. He has a way of making you feel included. When I first went to the University of Iowa in, uh, for my master's degree, uh, I was involved in the facilities operation and, and I, uh, I ran uh, a couple of outdoor tennis facilities and an indoor recreation building and in that role I worked with lots of coaches and one thing led to another and I, I began to think a little bit about athletic administration and um, lo and behold I got an opportunity to go to Northern Iowa as an assistant athletic director. Uh, Stan Sheriff, the athletic director who was also the football coach at the time, uh, decided that he was going to stop coaching football and, and take the athletic director's job at the University of Hawaii. And so at 31 years old, I ended up being the interim AD at Northern Iowa. I also think I you know, have had a lot of great mentors and colleagues through my work with the NCAA. Uh, my service on the men's basketball committee, I was the chair for two tournaments and uh, I, was, I was also on the NCAA wrestling committee and was chair for a couple years. And uh, it, it, you, d you develop very uh, close relationships, very trusted relationships. You know, in retirement, I've had uh, people say to me, uh, I appreciate the way that you treated me over the years. In the end, I, I guess I'm probably about as proud of that legacy as anything that, that people feel like uh, I have made difficult decisions, but done so uh, keeping in mind uh, their best wishes and, and treating them right. I met Bob as a student athlete at the University of Iowa. I was a member of the track and field team. And, you know, everybody knows who Bob is, but to actually get to meet him personally just validates what an awesome human being he is. My junior year, I was the student athlete advisory committee chair. And in my role, kind of speaking for women's athletics, I got to be a part of that bridge to help merge the men's and women's departments. And I just was so impressed as our very first meeting with Bob, he really brought together the team and made us all feel like really the all boats will rise in this higher tide at Iowa. Ultimately, he's the kind of leader people want to follow. And I've given some thought. I feel like I've been a student of the book of Bob Bowlesby for, for many years, having watched his way of leadership at the University of Iowa, his leadership at Stanford, and now in my role with the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee. And he often jokes that he's the mailman. He just delivers uh, whatever is asked of him. But really what he does is he people have trust in him because not only does he know what to deliver, he knows how to get that accomplished. And so I think those elements make him a really strong leader and he's one of the best in the country. 
there were so many high points in terms of uh, the wins. And, you know, un unlike my own career, where I remember the losses a lot better than I remember the wins, over a long athletics career, I tend to remember the wins more than the losses. Uh, you know, there are, there are plenty of both, but I've been very fortunate. I've been with successful programs and I've had the opportunity to, uh, to uh, be an additive factor in, in a lot of those situations. So whatever the case may be, I, I think I always draw upon what I've learned out on the wrestling mat and what I've learned in the room is that you get out of it what you put into it. If you are willing to sacrifice and commit yourself to it, uh, you're gonna have a better chance of getting a good outcome. It takes a lot to put tears in my eyes, but uh, I, uh, I teared up a little bit for them to recognize me and to remember my involvement uh, with uh, the USOPC and, and with wrestling and, and with uh, um, sports and, and all of the things that go along with it. It, it really took me aback and for, for them to recognize me uh, is the highest honor I've ever received.